So the Oakland A's uh, were apparently defeated last night. I don't know. I didn't watch. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we lost uh, three uh, three nothing to the Tigers. We? To, yeah, we. You're on the team. No, that's how I talk. You're the bat boy. Yeah. No, cool. but I mean, I'm, look, I've been an A's fan since 1977. They. So they, they uh, we lost uh, three nothing. To Verlander. To again. Justin Verlander, who's now given up one run in 31 innings against the A's the last two years. Right. Enough with the five game series. Like Agreed. baseball from 1969 when they went to divisional play until 85 had best of five. And then they recognized we don't play 162 games for a quick five game series. So they went to seven. And then when they expanded the playoffs and whenever the hell they expanded playoffs, they uh, stuck this five game series back in. Five games is just as flawed now. The A's and Tigers won divisions. These are division winning teams. No. They've earned the right for a seven-game series, which would give the A's a better chance because instead of Verlander in 40% of the starts, he's still only going twice. Okay. You're in 28% of the starts, 29% of the starts. And then, to the, hang on, to the contrary, then, wouldn't people say, well, you need to simplify and take away some games from the regular season in order to have those seven-game series? I don't think people would say that. I think owners would say that. They don't want to give up the dates. There's some logic that could have baseball go back to 154 games, which they played for quite some time. And that would be... Which I'm uh, in favor of. That would be fine. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, from a statistical point of view, it would sort of, you know, we have 162. I would just start the season earlier. But if they went to 154... Start the season earlier? Yeah. So they could play in the snow? Well, I mean, you can't... It's, your worst is to play late into November. So I would start it a little earlier, and I would make an effort like to... It's like a lose-lose. Well, I mean, they've started it earlier before. Move it up four days. You can start it earlier. Sure. There's, I mean, yeah, and you're going to have some... You're going to lose some games to weather, and you're going to have to make them up. But so the five-game series is shit. Is yeah, I mean, look, we're talking about two days. Like, the fact of the matter is, because they already have the, the, the uh, travel days already there. They already have the two travel days. The seven-game series doesn't have more travel days. Mm. So you're literally just adding two days. So you move the season up four days, three days. And, but you need seven games um, because it is a still a little unfair to have a team with one dominant, dominant pitcher take such a significant role in a five-game series. And you know the A's are every and bit. Justin Verlander may have done the every, A's are every. I think we the A's are top to bottom. I actually think we're better than the Tigers. But you stick in a guy like Verlander, and you in a short series, it's just it's too dramatic. So that's the stuff that irritated me. Here's the other thing that irritated me: home plate umpire Tom Hallion. Verlander was going to throw a shutout. Like the guy didn't cost us the game, and I want to make that very clear. But the tendency of umpires to give dominant pitchers an extra three or four inches is insane. They're already great. And you kept the TBS graphic is just wrong. It calls everything. Every graphic is wrong. No. I've never seen one that's like ESPN, spot on. ESPN's is the much, K-Zone? much better. I don't much think more so. accurate. TBS is I think way off. I think out of anything it's too narrow. That's just my opinion. Everything though. is almost a strike. Everything. And you see in stuff like especially the high strike, they don't have that down at all. No. Uh, so, but anyway, but you could see even given that, like balls are missing three, four, six inches outside, and he's calling them a strike. Six inches? Yeah, guys, balls are missing six inches outside. Whatever. That's my four inches. They're missing, clearly. Four inches is that. It's a lot. You can't give guys like Verlander that kind of help. Agreed. He knows it. He sees it. He knows then what he can do, and yep. it just makes it that much tougher. So uh, I did. I had a very uh, winning tweet. So you brought in some props today. I just want to point out that during the game, I tweeted that uh, Tom Hallion just uh, called Scott Norwood's field goal good, <laughs> <laughs> um, well which got some nice reaction well from yeah, people in Buffalo. I'm sure it They're, did. People in Buffalo. One guy tweeted. He was like, "Oh, thank God, I'm finally laughing." In <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> yeah. um, so show so, us your props, Ben. So I, you know, I came in because I still, you know, I still want to support the boys. <laughs> Um, the boys, the boys, and this is from. I didn't get to a game this year, but this is my uh, this is my A's the towel. rally towel. And I was at games three and four last year, which we no, won. Yeah, hold it up again. Hold it up again. Let's see. So I was doing this on my couch a little yesterday. It was a little. <laughs> <laughs> it was incredibly lame. Uh, as was, I think, the dumbest tweet. Lee I ever. was in favor of that, by the way. Oh yeah, she was like, wave the towel, wave the towel. Yeah. She's super superstitious. She was like, when Reddick walked, we were holding hands. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. So. So we had That's to hold hands lame. again. Um, right, yeah. But I knew, like, you know, Verlander, who's been so good in September and October, but was had a, had his worst season. So there are days when he 13, just doesn't have right? No, he this was over 500. He was, he was either 13, th 13 and 12. And 12 yeah. yeah. And I mean, his ERA was 3.46. Not like he struck out 217 guys. Not like he had a bad year. But his whip was at 1-3. So he was hittable, and he had those seven starts where he gave up five runs. So sure. I was just hoping just – just help me out. Just give me one of those starts yeah, where he sure, doesn't have it. Sure. But you knew two innings in, uh oh, like, and you could tell with Sonny Gray he wasn't that curveball Best wasn't name. sharp. Best name. 
So you knew if you give it like one run, maybe we can survive, but two runs. So as soon as Cabrera hit that home run, I had to go for a walk. <laughs> no, you didn't. I did. I took a hour. backyard or f no, no. I took a forty-five minute walk to listen to the game on the radio. You did. I couldn't watch it. I couldn't watch it. I knew that you were a passionate sports fan. I didn't know that it got to you that much well, with A's baseball. Here's the thing: the A's now the statistic everyone's quoting since two thousand. So in the twenty-first century, the A's are one in twelve yep. in closeout games. Now that's not a reflection of Billy Bean. It's not a reflection of anything. Those are different managers: Art Howe, Ken Maka, Bob Melvin. Different managers, totally different players, different coaching staffs. Yeah. Billy Bean is a constant. But first of all, that's and it's five five game series. <laughs> five game series where we've lost the deciding game, but it's 12 times. So that means 13 times. I woke up in the morning and thought, today's the day. <laughs> nope, 12 <laughs> times we lose. And the one win was kind of bullshit in 2006, beating the Twins, because 2006. And who was on that team? It's an aberration. You know, 2000, oh, 2000 to 2003 is Giambi left in the middle, but it's still, it's the Giambi, Chavez, Tejada, and the big three pitchers. It's that team that. A's fans at the Moneyball team. Yes. And then now is this, now the is this sort of way. new. Well, I said the big three pitchers. Okay, okay. And Sorry, then this, this year is the new Moneyball, the new version of Moneyball. Although, as Jim Cott said, this team is not a Moneyball team. This team is based on uh, pitching and bargains. <laughs> I got news for you, Jim. That That's Moneyball. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Read the book. That's what it yeah. sounds like. Um, so, yeah. uh, um, so, but 2006 was Frank Thomas, Milton Bradley, Keith Folk. Like Esteban Loaiza, those that's not Esteban an Esteban Loaiza. That's not an A's. That. That's not the A's. Started game two of the f series against the Tigers. That's not an A's team. That's not it. That's not what we were. Zito was still on that team, but Bartolo Colon is what Bartolo the A's Colon's kind of become an A, right? A uh, big fat steroid user. What does it take user. to become an A? Like, can you you, you got to be a that? you got to be a little washed up as a minor leaguer or a major leaguer, so that, to the point where there's value still in you, and the A's give you a deal. You know, can you give me a name that you didn't just name previously? That is like an A for life. Well, Stephen Vogt is like an you know, I mean, he's a that's a guy who started with Tampa, is 29 years old, that the A's sort of you know pulled back. But I mean, you know, the, from Moneyball, Scott Hatterberg is the perfect Scott example, a yeah. guy that they mm -hmm. sort of changed positions on and turned a career into. Um, but you know, uh, g again, it's did guys they have Rocco Ball Deli at one point? The A's? No, they uh, did not. No, okay. no. Um, but like, um, I forgot about Rocco Baldelli. But Baldelli. But think He's about on Twitter. Um, like, uh, 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 like Jed Lowry. I mean, this is a guy who comes up with the Red Sox as a big prospect. They make a significant deal with him to send him to Houston when Houston was still trying. But like, if Lowry hadn't been hurt all the time, the Astros could have gotten more for him. But the A's were able to come in, and they still gave up something for him. But sure. you know, to get that deal because he's undervalued. Cologne, oddly, with the suspension that hurt the A's so much last year, but that made him, after the year he had, he would have gotten even more money that he was able, the A's were able to think, like now we probably can't get Cologne to come back next year. My mm -hmm. hunch is because he'll make eight or nine million dollars sure. a year on a one year deal and he'll go pitch for somebody else. Does he have the weirdest wind up you've ever seen? Um, Bartolo Cologne. It's kind of odd. Um, I don't it know. It doesn't I've look like he's throwing hard, yet he throws hard. He throws pretty hard, although he, you know, you can always tell with Cologne, if he's throwing 89, you're in trouble. When he's throwing 93, you might be 93? Okay. He, he, he was hitting 96 this year. Yeah, on a couple of pitches, but not consistently. Like, uh, so, uh, but the games that I saw, he was hitting it pretty He's hit it. I know. He's definitely, yeah. he's definitely hit it. But, uh, but he's like, when he's going well, it's 91, 92, and, and when he's not, it's 87, 88. Well, Ben. I'm sorry. One in 12. I'm sorry. How's that? Like, nobody thinks about us. <laughs> like don't you know? Like the players, fuck the players. The <laughs> players weren't there in 2000. Yeah. You know, Jed Lowry yeah. doesn't care about the 2000 A's. He didn't remember blowing two nothing leads against the Yankees and the Red Sox hey, and a two one lead against the Twins. Those are mine. I own those. <laughs>